Hey there, and welcome back. Let's get right to the effects tracker, which is the last addition to the tracker palette made in DaVinci Resolve 12.5. The way it works is very similar to the point tracker, except instead of applying the tracking data to one of your power windows, it will apply it to one of the effects available inside of the new open effects palette introduced in 12.5. There will be a separate tutorial discussing some of these functions, but in the meantime, I just want to show how we can track some of these to the footage. The first thing we're going to do is add a new serial node. This is what we'll apply the resolve effects to. Next, I'm going to throw in a lens flare. And by default, that's what it looks like. It's got a very bright specular, which I can move across the sky. And my idea for this is I want to maybe have an artificial sun in the sky. So I'm going to go into the open effects settings and I will now see all of the controls for the lens flare under it. And I can choose to change the type of preset I'm using. You've got one here, the MIR, which looks like the classic lens flare you get when you're shooting directly into the sun. What I'm going to do is uh, perhaps make this a little bit smaller. So I'm going to scroll down and use my global scaling to bring down the size of this sun. And you can see it's got this really nice lens flare underneath. So I've got a pretty long shot and it begins with the sun not in view and eventually it does come in and then we travel all the way out and turn the camera again. So there's my effect and we are now going to use the effects tracker. Just like with the point tracker, I'm going to add a tracking point. And obviously I can't track the sky because that's empty, but I'm going to place my trackers in a position that's as close to the sun as possible, which is probably these elements in the back, these chimneys. Uh, <laughs> because the tracker is appearing inside of the sun controls, it seems to think that I want to change the diameter of the sun as I'm moving the tracker. So I'm just going to move this a little bit out of the way, drop my tracker, place it on the chimney here, beautiful, make another tracker and place it on the other chimney. And I think that's enough for it to understand the relationship that's occurring over here. Then I can move the sun back into place. And you can see how the lens flare moves in a different direction as this happens. So it's quite natural. Now I'm ready to start analyzing forward. And there you go. Check out how the sun moves in relation to the lens flare, how they're quite individual, which is what you would realistically get with a lens flare. And there's some branches in the sky that really should be over the sun and not under it. That's something that we can definitely address using the key mixer in the note editor. So we're going to be covering this in future tutorials. Don't worry, there's plenty we can still do to make this look even better. Now that the track's done in one direction, I can click more or less back to where I started and track in reverse. I'm going to turn off my on-screen controls and play this back. And that's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to make another serial node and apply another grade to give this a more interesting look. So I really like how the edges on this light just blur out and taper off towards the end, which is what you would realistically hope to see. And you can still continue to work on your effect. You can still reposition the object on the screen and it will still continue to be tracked without any issues. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.